Hiya. Welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Channel, where we keep great radio from the past alive. And today, we are playing some audio from Doug Tract, better known to many as the Grease Man. He really, truly is a one-of-a-kind air personality. In this era when you have three and four and five people doing a morning show together, he did it all by himself. And boy, did he create some comedy gold. Uh, he got the name The Grease Man from back in his days when he was on the radio when he was in college. Back when everybody would say, I'm cooking, you know, like, I'm cooking with the Temptations or cooking with the Four Tops. Well, to show that he was cooking harder than anybody else, he would say, I'm cooking with heavy grease. And he said it so often, his fellow jocks started calling him the Grease Man. And it stuck. <laughs> For many years, Dougie T was the name he used on the air. But then he created this persona, you know, kind of like an older, middle-aged guy, kind of big belly truck driver with a lot of swagger. And over the years, he started using listeners and use their phone calls to help launch him into bits and stories. Grease even created his own language, so nothing was taboo. He could talk about anything he wanted, and his listeners knew what he was talking about. Grease is probably best known for his days at DC 101, WWDC in Washington, where he ruled Washington radio in the 1980s and 1990s. Hey, if you like what you hear, feel free to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel too if you like. All right, let's go back with the one and only Grease Man on WWDC, DC 101, Washington. We're rocking with Washington's best jock, the Grease Man. Ooh, daddy, daddy. WWDC FM, Washington, DC 101. Yeah, man, uh, that would be something, wouldn't it? Uh, that makes me quiver just to think about it. Uh, yeah. All right, stop it. Ah! Oh, man, oh, man. Uh, that would have you certainly nonplussed, uh, to say the very least. Uh, 7 before 8 o'clock, the grease here, 432 on the long distance line. I got some Roger Waters tickets to give away between 9 and 10. Hello. Good morning. Uh, quickly, pick up the phone. Uh, don't listen to the radio. Listen to me. Hop uh, hop 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 all right, I gotta run along. Hello, one one. <laughs> yes. What's happening? I'm a man. You're a man. Yes, sir. You're not on the radio, are you? Yes, we're on the radio. Quickly, go ahead. Hey, I'm trying to f find out where uh, get me a domestic at. Where to get you a domestic? Yeah, where the looking ones are, man. How do you find a domestic? Well, just 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 speaking to you, just in the in the one or two sentences you've said to me, I can tell that you don't have the financial wherewithal uh, to afford a domestic. Sure, I do. That's what, why I'm looking. What do you do for a living? I'm a copier and typewriter technician. And uh, you're pulling down what? About uh, 18 G's? No, no. Hmm? I work for a good company. Work for uh, T. Talbot Bond. Really? Making, making almost 30000 And uh, And I'm not even a supervisor or nothing. Do you, do you want a full-time domestic? No, no. See, my wife works too, and she... Uh, she makes a little bit more than I do. Oh, so you're making 60 G's between you, so you're making some uh, relatively tolerable do dollars, eh? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, I met my wife and her husband had died, and, uh, so we had a house, and we bought another house, and we rent the other one. We just don't have time to clean it. You bought in your house. Uh, <clears throat> where, is, where is this home located? Perhaps I can lend you one of mine. Huh? Where is your home? Only. Only Maryland. Uh, we see, it's hard. You see, most domestics would need to take the bus or something. I don't believe the bus line. Do you have a bus stop in front of your home? I don't think so. Uh, no, ride one. We got a ride one. Huh? We got a ride one, not too far. Yeah. You know, 108. Well, then you'll have to pick up the domestic. Uh, see, see, see that's a pain in the neck. You, you, you must have the, most domestics don't have their own transportation. Yeah. You see? Okay, well, see, my niece is over here watching the kids because I have a son that's one year old. And it's nice, so I just leave to work. I don't yeah, well, we know what you ought to do then. What you ought to do, and rather than get a new why don't you get a live in? Like, you know, I, you, you can get. How a, much am I talking? How, how much are you talking, like a week or whatever? Well, if you talk it, like you could get, like, from uh, from uh, Rent and Immigrant, I forget the name of what it's called, but uh, yeah, you, you could get one. If you have a live in, you could have one for, uh, you know, probably get one, get by for around uh, 200 bucks a week. 200 bucks? Maybe even 150. Okay, I, I told her, I'd tell my wife, I said, we'll just tell, we'll just tell her, I said, if we get one of these ones, so I'll just ask her for a green card. She starts getting mad. And no, 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 you want to have it bonafide. You know, you, you have to feed her, clothe her. 
Yeah, Give right. it a day off. Can you handle the 152 bills a week? We probably could, but then we cut back on there. Yeah. Either get, that, or you know what you do? You get you like an indentured servant from another land. You know, some somebody like uh, some young girl from Holland or something wants to move to the United States. You pay the plane fare. She agrees to work for you for a certain amount of time, huh? Like yeah, a like yeah, a nanny, like good. a like a governess, huh? Hey, um, whatever happened to that song? I never hear you sing. Uh, I, I don't get to hear you a whole lot, but mm -hmm. I'm on the road. I, I don't have to be to work till nine. But, what song? Uh, ba 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 or something like that. Bachi me. Yeah, about to you, about to me. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah. All right, I'll sing it for you right now. Can you hang on a second? Okay. All right, give me one second. We built this city. Get ready to rock and roll. We built this city on rock and roll. What in tarnation is an Isuzu? Bravo, bravissimo. Big article on Ned Beatty in the USA Today. Ned Beatty. I'm not sure how you get to be an international commodity, says twinkly-eyed, omnipresent character actor Ned Beatty. Surely the unlikeliest international comedy on view. Commodity on view in one of the business. Yeah, Ned Beatty. Yeah, Ned Beatty. But in films I started with Deliverance, that was a serious actor. So that was his first serious role, Deliverance. Deliverance, you like a hog, boy. You like a hog. Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty. Let's cut this picture around and paste it up. Paste it up in a can. Hey, I love Ned Beatty. He's my favorite actor. Ned, you look just like, oh, boy, you, we want your money. We we'll take your money. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Hey, you squeal, boy. You know how to squeal. Yeah. Ned, yeah. But that's a little too brutal for this time of the morning. I think we've done enough ravaging. Uh, constrictive all of these. Uh, let's do something wacky. Where's that woman with the big ample bosom? Yes. And the, and the, the floral print dress. Yeah. Come here, baby. She's a big woman. She's getting lots of room now. Watch me. I watch you. And everything goes crazy. No, watch me. What do you think about this? <laughs> Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away from me. Get away. Get away. WWDC FM Washington. It's 801. This is Rod Allen Fritz, DC 101 News. President Reagan is expected to give the Soviets a little nudge in a speech today on East-West relations. An administration official says the Kremlin will be encouraged to take clear steps to show its interest in easing world tensions. Park police are asking for your help in apprehending the third man wanted in the shooting of one of their officers. He's 23-year-old Kendall Alexander of Baltimore. Park police are offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to Alexander's arrest and conviction. Two others have already been arrested in the shooting of Officer Patrick Gavin. Gavin is now recovering from a gunshot wound to the temple. If you get less than a good night's sleep, drinking alcohol the next day may be especially numbing, a new study suggests. And afternoon and late nights may be the worst time to toss back a few. Researchers at a Detroit hospital studied the effects of alcohol and caffeine on the alertness of men and women. And they say if you're going to drink, make sure you're well rested. Which means there may also be more than the obvious wisdom in the old wives' tale of sleeping it off. They say even a short nap may make you more alert if you've had too much to drink. Fairly cloudy today. Chance of a light shower high in the upper 70s. Tonight, cloudy with a 40% chance of showers or thunderstorms. We'll have a low in the upper 60s to low 70s. And then on Thursday, partly sunny and warmer, more humid with a chance of rain high around 90. Right now, 70 degrees. This is Ron Allen Fritz. <laughs> Maluka, Nick kind of soupy up here today. Not, a, not too good a day for flying, but it's pretty calm, you know, so I like it sometimes when it's like this because you don't get the uh, the draft, the up and down business. Slowing on the New York Avenue is a broken down Metro brush in the right hand lane near the uh, Econo Hotel, which is a great place if you've ever been in there. Up on 14th Street, also slower than normal, and Route 50 is uh, steady. That's the story up to the minute. Back in an hour in more details. You got the big Maluka, Dick Maluka, DC 101 uh, traffic. Give me room now. Give me room now. Give me room now. Yeah. All right, you can sit on my knee like you. Ah, there he is. There's a little fella. <laughs> Hurry, dude. Let me go. I'm not to feel good. Hey, listen, 
to him, listen to him, listen to him and go. Uh, uh, the commander here, uh, kind of a bogus looking day, but we can handle it. It's a little cloudy. But uh, here I'm going to do law, man. We're going to be slinging some lead and uh, do a little more singing, some shrieking. What's not like? Got some Roger Waters tickets to give away before too long for the big show Sunday night. Unbelievable, man. It is unbelievable, but true. Uh, we will be rocking uh, DC 101. We got Telos on the line. Hello. Yeah, Greece. Uh, well, I was wondering, to, I was calling to wonder if uh, you got that tape I sent you. It's got a rap on it. Yeah. Well, you got a chance to listen to it. I did get a listen to it, and I appreciate it. It was very nice of you to send it to uh, Good. I'm glad. Uh, what a tribute. A little tribute to the grease. Yeah. I, I listened to it driving along, and I appreciate you taking the time to do it. Okay. Thanks, Great. buddy. Take it easy, All right. Bye-bye. Right. There's a man me a nice uh, little ode to the grease, and uh, it's very nice. Thank you. Hello. Hello. What about the couple? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I was wondering if you could play the <clears throat> roofer's rap. The roofer's rap. We're working on it. 101. Good morning. Yeah, there's Grease Man there. Yeah, this is, go ahead. Grease Man, hey, how you doing? I got a short, quick story for you. I was down in North Carolina a couple of weeks ago, and um, my sister-in-law was having a baby shower, and her mom said of all these foods and so on, it was funny. They had this stuff, it was party mix called uh, Doodads. 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 I've seen them in the store. They, uh, it's, it's a box of, uh, like, like a mixture of pretzels and uh, yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's do that. I never saw them before, and I was having a good time going around asking the ladies. I said, what are you eating there? And they'd say, do that. And I'm like, oh, man, if your husband only knew. <laughs> Yeah, it you, was a good time. You jo- I keep a box of doodads on the good ship Greece. <laughs> yeah, did you notice it when you were out bored, Steve? Oh, no, no. There is a box of doodads. I showed Steve my doodads. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I saw them at a supermarket. I had to get them. Doodads. Oh, yeah. Doodads. They're hilarious. Uh, they are. Thing. They're great, dear. Yeah. One more thing about that um, Clinton bit you did yesterday with um, Fudge Man. Yeah. I think you had to do an individual rap on Fudge Man. I had to sit through a green light laughing so hard. No, 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 no. Fudge man. Holy hydraulics, Fudge man. <laughs> I don't know. We might bring back Fudge man. That sounds great. All right. Thanks. That's the great shrieking, man. Thanks, buddy. Will do. All see, right. See you later. Later. Bye bye. 101. Hello. Hey, Grease. Um, I, I want you to do a bit for me. Can you bring back Horny Heart, maybe? Uh, maybe. He's out of the news, though. He's out of the news. Buddy. He's back in the news, though. He may run again. If he runs again, we might bring it back. Okay, the, if not, Horny Heart, I never hear the words to the song, All the Inbred People. I, I always do, catch do, the do, tail do. end of it. All right, maybe we we'll listen. I wonder what Garrett is going to do if he gets out. No, he'll, he'll never be able to clash because he'll be watching for him. Well, if he decides to run again, eh, eh, obviously, you know, he, he's a man with needs. He's a man uh, with needs. What's he going to do? If he's going to Yeah. Yeah, I guess he blew it. Uh, he blew it. When they caught him, you know, walking out of his townhouse with his face glistening like a glazed donut, I guess that's where he blew it. You know, when those reporters ran up to him. Yeah, I was bottom knocking. What's it do you? Ain't you ever had a good time? Now, don't bother me with the trivialities now. Hey, don't bother me. I guess you did shit. Hey, me, hey, this. Look at you. You want to be, you got a biscuit? You got a biscuit? You're welcome to swallow. You see, then uh, it might have defused the whole thing, but in, uh, instead, uh, running down the block with the reporters trailing in his wake, it allows what the hell? Uh, you see, you, you see, Gary Hart would have done a lot better if he had boldly, uh, you know, he said, "Look at this shit. That's what I got." Uh, you know, and he looked at those reporters right in the eye and said, "My gal is red hot, young gal, a doodly squat, but she ain't got money. But man, she's really got a lot." Let me catch my breath. Let me catch my breath. Let me get, let me, let me, let me catch my breath. A second. Let me put a put a nitro under my chin. Yeah. All right. We got some lawman action. Just a second. We are here with a convert to Baltimore Washington International Airport. That's today, Chevrolet. Yeah. Sounds real good to me, Lord. Sounds real good to me. Sounds real good. Sounds real good. Sounds real good to me. Sounds real good to me. Yeah. job pop and he said well i yes i i allow children to sit in my lap and they tell me what they want and they say you're a pervert huh you're a pervert you get your gun off with little kids like that he said no no i i, I give everything away i i come down chimneys i ah, ah you're a peeping tom with an unusual proclivity huh i don't want to kibosh on some kindling wood won't it? Uh, let me tell you something you stupid fat pig you child molesting god burger I'm gonna rip that fake beard right off your face! I'm gonna rip it right on you! Take this fat man downtown and 
Ben Bucker. 17 minutes after 8 o'clock with the Grease Man. Uh, we are DC 101. We are loving life. Uh, Dexter Manley at 8.30. Uh, we'll be talking about the strike. 90% of the Redskins uh, voted uh, for a strike. The strike is uh, scheduled for uh, September the 15th. And uh, you, could you... Uh, we have some questions. I made some notes for, for Dex from last time that I didn't ask him. Things, some things I wanted to get to for, uh, for the big Dex who's going to be on at 8.30. Keep in mind, tomorrow at 8.30, Dexter Manley... He's going to be talking to Vinny Testaverde. He's going to, we're going to wake him up. We're going to call up Tampa Bay and wake his behind up. Jack, wake his behind up. And we'll be finding out about the strike, which uh, looks like uh, nearly. Gene Upshaw says the players are prepared to strike September the 15th. Uh, so we shall see what happens. Dex will give us the rundown. Uh, should we go with Telos? Uh, we'll just a, a quick Telos. Good morning, 101. Grief man. Yes. Hey, listen, I got a couple favors to ask you. What is it? Okay, first thing is, I want the truth here now. What, what about this Holy Roman Empire bit? I just got a little burned out on it. I'll do it again for you. I'll spice it up for you. Maybe one morning on the bed of show, I'll uh, bring back one of the other bits for you. You know, okay. every every Saturday morning from 8 till 10, I do the best of show. Okay. Were, you, were you aware of that? I was aware of that, Greg. Yeah, I string them together. Just tons a bitch. Tons, huh? Tons. Okay, now listen, one other thing. Mm. You won't believe where I was this weekend. Where? I was in... God forsaken Paw Paw, West Virginia. What were you doing in Paw Paw? I went on a fishing trip with my boss. Was it fun? It was fun, but but you wouldn't believe the maggotry hanging out in Paw Paw, West Virginia. Really? You wouldn't believe it. I don't think one person had any teeth at all. Really? Yeah. Could you do West Virginia story? Well, you know, you know who's a lonely guy? You know how like Mick Tag repairman's a lonely guy? In Paw Paw, Virginia, the dentists are lonely guys. <laughs> <laughs> and they sit there and they say, geez, I wonder if anyone's going to come in. Orthodontia, orthodontia, you know, guys, uh, periodontists, they don't even think about stopping at Bobo. I mean, <laughs> I mean, one customer every 15 years. Hey, y'all ought to work on that malocclusion. Uh, Mala what? <laughs> really, yeah, I mean, you know, the, you know who's also very lonely there? Dental floss salesman. Hey, there's, you know, there's tumbleweeds blowing through the dental floss uh, dealership there. <laughs> And Paul Bart's yeah. like, ugh. Uh, the only thing of those are highs in a family restaurant, I think. Gum disease, a way of life. And Paul Bart. Well, Grace, if you get one of those West Virginia stories, I'd really appreciate it, buddy. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks for calling. Uh, one on one, let's go to the long distance tell us. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey, Grace, I finally figured out why you don't like sailboats. Why? Because you can't handle one, buddy. It's too hard for you. Uh, it's easy to handle a power boat. What do you mean? A man of my stature, even if I had a sailboat, I would just sit there with a Volker Gimlet and I would say, you there, hoist that mizzle. All you got to do is steer, buddy. Yeah, nah, but it's no good. It's too Put slow. Put down the throttle and steer. That's it. Yeah, what, in a powerboat? Yeah. Modern technology, Jack. Yeah, but in a sailboat, you got to watch the sails, you got to tack, you got to... Watch the d- gauges and stuff and navigate, buddy. Yeah, you got to navigate with a power boat. You got to know the speed. Yeah. You got to know how to put those hammers down. Uh, you got to be able to sniff those carcinogens. Uh, those two huge engines. Belch noxious fumes. Uh, you got to be able to handle it. Uh, you got to be able to make quick decisions when you're screaming along at 42 miles an hour. And that thing is planed out and you got a veritable apartment house up on the water. Uh, you got to make the f- decisions fast, buddy. You don't just loll along at three and a half uh, miles an hour. Yeah, but that's a life, buddy. That's easy. That's fun. Uh, that's not fun. You schwitz. Uh, I think I just I just don't think that, that, that we'll ever achieve a, a common plane on that ground. Hello, one on one. Yes, please. Yeah. I got this problem. What is it? Uh, I've been out with this young lady for a long time. Speak up. And I was trying to, uh, you know, close on that thing. Yeah. And what happened? Well, after a couple of days there, a serious problem. The old hydraulics got stuck on on. Yeah, well, that can happen, but uh, it's a good problem. Better they should get stuck on on than stuck on off. Uh, then you really be hating life. What a one. Good morning. You got a man on the line. We must hasten. Hasten. Uh, when I pick up that phone, I want to hear those eyeballs clicking into place. What a one. You're here. You cannot deny Telos. Telos. Telos will not be denied. Yes, look at, all right, please, let's stop this uh, exchange of prostaglandins and have a conversation. How you doing, Grease? Very well. Yeah, I'd rather not put brand names on the air, if you don't mind. Yeah, but there's one brand name I'll put on the air. The wee shit. The wee Yeah, you know the wee shit. Nobody beats the wee shit. It's a wee shit. 
They got all the name brands. We yeah. Records, tapes, CDs, TVs, stereos, VCRs, speakers, turntables. Uh, you, you, it doesn't matter. Just get to the whiz. I mean, any name brand top of the line piece of equipment that you've been dreaming about, they got it to whiz. Now let's talk price. Huh? Let's get to the bottom line here. Let's talk De Niro. Let's talk, we'll talk simoleons. Yeah? Let's talk dead presidents. Can we talk that? Can we talk cash? Yeah? Can we talk green stuff? Well, all right, dear. You get into the weeds. Whatever you buy there, hang on to the receipts. Because for 30 days from when you buy, if you can find what you bought at a lower price somewhere else, uh, just bring in your receipt and proof of a lower price, and the weeds will refund the difference because nobody beats the weeds. There's weeds all over the place. All over the place, yeah. You just yeah, call the operator say, hey, operator, the weeds, the weeds, yeah, the weeds, yeah. They should give you the wheeze nearest you. This wheeze is, they're springing up left and right. So say, hey, there might be a new number, too, because there's new wishes, too. It's the wheeze. If it has to do with sound or entertainment, it's the whiz. Nobody beats the wheeze. Nobody beats the wheeze. Is breakfast at Roy's. Permanence. We are sports. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. The commander in charge, I really hope there's not going to be a football strike. I really do, but... Uh, Gene Upshaw has said uh, the players are ready to go out September the 15th. I was talking to Dexter. He tells me 90% of the Redskins vote for a strike. So uh, hopefully they'll come to terms with the owners because we'd be hate life. I mean, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. You see, I finally get to the point in my life where I can watch the Skins game uh, without interruption. And uh, when you know there's, you know, married to a stale. I never, my honey will cook up something. Die, a fire going, we'll cuddle on the couch. We watch the game. Yeah, we steal some smooches, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not, but Estelle, uh, you know, put me, put me through a living hell. I remember, she just didn't like to see me sit. I think that was the problem, you know? She just didn't, I mean, if I wasn't doing something, fixing something, she just wouldn't let me sit in peace. And it drove me nuts. It never failed. I'd be like, okay, everybody. Welcome to Blauman Stadium. The Redskins are set to receive the ball. It looks like it's going to be a great game today as the Skins are wearing barbs on their helmets and they're ready. They're wearing brass knuckles and it looks like they're going to be up. We'll be ready for the opening kickoff. And there it is. The ball's in the air. Here comes this still. You know, I think. What? Apparently somebody's been killed. Never. Was a play. What play? I miss you. Hey, Jack, get out of the way. Get out of the way. He said, well, you want to clean the house, don't you? Yes, yes, I want to clean the house. Yes, I want to clean the house, but not now. Now I want a dirty house, huh? Now I want a dirty house. Shut up with the vacuum cleaner. I'm not crying at you. Oh, she went in the kitchen. If you don't want me around, I won't be around. Said so Estelle, it's not that I don't want you around. See, now I'm having this conversation. Missing it again. Still, don't go away, man. Just go away. All right, let me watch the issue. But all right, thank you, thank you. She went clomping into the kitchen. Okay, we're ready for the start of the next series. Now that it looks like it's going to be a lot. And meanwhile, Estelle's in the, in the kitchen. <laughs> She said, oh, that's great. That's real nice. Huh? Now we got a hole in the window. 30 degrees. I said, the hole will be good. It'll help me cost this rain. It'll keep me awake. I'm trying to watch the Skins game. I don't want your noise. You lousy noise. So she starts emptying the dishwasher as loud as she can just to take me off. She's in there. Oh, yeah. Where does this go? Up here, I need. Oh. Tupperware fell on the show. Meanwhile, my blood pressure is like 275 over 210, yeah? I walked over, I unplugged the TV set. I said, it's done. Since I can't watch it, yet, I might as well hear it! 
nice. I mean, it was uh, spitting parts, huh? Yeah, the works in the drawer, the works are on the floor. And, uh, uh, then I walked into the kitchen, uh, and I turned on all the burners and the oven. Gas. They're all going... Tss. You know, by this point, I'm, not, I'm just seeing red. She said, what are you doing? I said, I uh, stab Meet you at the resurrection, all right there. Yeah. And I flick a magic. I mean, we went, took ourselves a tea kettle flying through the air. We're lying there in the lawn. I'm bleeding from my nose and my ears. I got a bust arm. One one leg is grotesquely alongside of me. And Estelle looks at me. She says, Hi. When we're in the hospital, uh, do you think we'll have to wear white bandages, or can we wear green bandages? Uh, I just looked at her and said... For three weeks, I sat in a rubber room in a straitjacket saying nothing but... 